Here's part three of our chapter one video lecture, where we're going to prepare simple, basic financial statements. These are reports that we give the users of financial information to help them make business decisions. Now, our starting point is where we had left off in the previous lecture. That's using this accounting equation with all the accounts listed under each of the categories and their balance here at the end of the month. So we're going to take these last balances and rearrange them into four different financial reports or financial statements. Here are the four different ones. And we do them in this order because a number from the previous financial statement is then going to be used in the next financial statement. A number in the previous financial statement is going to be used in the next financial statement and so forth. So the first financial statement, called an income statement, reports the profitability. Let's zoom in here. The profitability of a company. So at the top of the financial statement, we have the name of the company and what type of financial statement it is of the four. In the case of an income statement, we're looking at the whole period of time, in this case, the month of December. You definitely want to have an annual financial statement, but based upon the company's needs, maybe you'll prepare a financial statement every month or every quarter. In this case, we're looking just at a, a month. So on this income statement, or sometimes they call it a profit or loss statement, at the very bottom is where I first look at is whether the company is profitable or not. And if we have a net income or a net profit, that means our company has been profitable for this period of time. The income statement is divided up into two parts. Here's the different ways of making money called revenue. And here's the different ways of using up costs for a company called expenses. In our company, we have two different types of ways of making money. So remember, we have two revenue accounts, one for consulting revenue, where we had recorded two different amounts being um, earned, and this is the total for the whole period. And then the other revenue was renting out our facilities here just for $300. So we grouped them into one column and and put the subtotal under the other next column to make it easier to go over to the next subtotal. That next category are expenses, and we have two different types of expenses. Again, expenses are costs that are used up to earn, to make this revenue. So here's the balances into the two rev the expense accounts and the subtotal. Again, we take the difference, and when the revenue is larger than the expenses, that difference is called net income or net profit. Some people just call it profit or income. Okay, so this is just telling you we're profitable and the size of the revenue and expenses, the magnitude. Now we're going to see what we call the financial condition. Oh, sorry, the profitability of our company since its inception. Here is a next financial statement we prepare called a statement of retained earnings. Retained, that means the earnings that we've kept or the profits we've kept since the time we started this business. And we do it for the same period of time as the income statement, in this case, the month of December. So our starting point is the profits we have kept from the beginning of the month, the beginning of the period. In this case, because it's a new business, the retained earnings is zero. And then we transfer that profit we've calculated on the income statement now into this retained earnings statement. And then during the month, we share those profits with the shareholders. And that's called dividends being paid out to those shareholders. So we minus out this $200 that was paid, leaving the retained earnings at the end of the month to be um, $4,200. Now, for next month, when we look at uh, January, this will move up to the, the beginning balance for retained earnings, adding in the January net income, minusing out the January dividends to get the returning, retained earnings at the end of January that will be the beginning for the next month. 
Okay, so that's the statement of retained earnings. And then the next financial statement we prepare for our company is the company's balance sheet. Sometimes they call this a statement of financial position. In other words, where are we financially for this company? Well, here is our accounting equation again. Here are the assets the company owns on this specific date. Notice it's not for the whole month of November, but whatever the company owns at the very end of this date, the end of the year in this case, and the liabilities we owe, and the equity. And we know in our accounting equation in the previous video, the assets, total assets here, have to equal the total liabilities and equity. So we have three different assets at the end of the month. When you look at this cash balance, it doesn't tell you where the money came from or where the money was spent. All it tells you, what is in this account on this date? Here at the end of the month, we have $9,600 of supplies, $26,000 of equipment. Total assets the company owns at the end of the month, $40,400. And liabilities we owe other people, $6,200 in this accounts payable account. And equity... This was the common stock issued at the very beginning of our, the start of our business. And here's the profits we've kept so far. The total of these two accounts is the equity, liabilities plus equity equals this total. And again, it has to match the total assets. And then the last financial statement we prepare is the statement of cash flow. Now, I'm not going to have you make one of these. Uh, we're going to have uh, really next semester in the second accounting class, Accounting 202, you'll spend a whole chapter just studying a statement of cash flow. So I want, I want you to know just that there's three parts to this. Here's where the money's coming from and going to, in this case, from our regular operations. Here, $1,000 coming from our customers, and then we spent 5,100 is running our business. And here we bought big investments in assets like this equipment, spending $26,000. And other ways we finance, we fund our business. The main one, of course, was the owner investing money. And here's money going back to the owner. So here's the change to our cash, our cash increase by 4,800. We started off with zero at the end of the month, and here's how much we have beginning of the month, and here's how much we have at the end of the month. And of course, if you do the cash flow for next month, this will move up to this line over here. Now, just because you collected $4,800 cash, this is not profit. This is not the income you had earned during the period. To know that, again, you have to go back to the company's income statement. Again, that was the first financial statement here. Notice the 4,400 net income, not the same as the same thing as increasing cash by $4,800. Okay, so that's why we got to make this income statement versus just having a cash flow statement. To know your profitability, you got to prepare an income statement. To know where your cash is coming from and going to, you should have a statement of cash of cash flow. Also, I prepared for the whole period of time here. Usually at the end of every chapter, we're going to have some type of financial analysis, some type of financial ratio. In our chapter one here, we're going to look at a so-called return, earning a profit on the assets of the company. So the way to figure that out is to look at that net income from the income statement we just saw. And we divide that by the average amount of assets we have for the period of time. So your answer is going to be some type of percentage. And bigger the better. This is showing you how efficient you're using your assets to earn a profit for your business. In the case of a big company like Nike, you can see how profitable they are. Versus another company in the same industry, Under Armour, they're less profitable. So you can always compare one company's profitability to another by using this return on assets 
calculation. Again, this should be a percentage, net income divided by total assets. Besides comparing one company with another or comparing it to an a average for the industry, you also can compare the same company to the previous period, previous year, to see some kind of trend. So you can see it, they're doing better than last year. In fact, even Under Armour, which had a loss, a net loss a previous year, now they have a profit. But again, they're not earning that profit as efficient with their assets as, as Nike. Okay, so be able to calculate this return on asset percentage. And again, the bigger that percentage, the better. Okay, so that's it for the um, lectures for Chapter 1. If my students have questions, you can always email me. I'll talk to you later in Chapter 2.